Hi, this is Calvin. Hey, um, I want to talk to you today about international ministry as part of this workshop I'm doing on international ministry with a handful of students, a part of this Bible course for students that happens every week. And today was our first session. And what I asked the students to do today was to imagine uh, an international visitor uh, walking into your church for the very first time. You know, if you could imagine that, what would they see? You know, what would their perspective, their first impressions be of your church that they're visiting for the first time? You know, would anyone say hello to them? You know, would they feel embarrassed, you know, to ask where the toilet is? Or more importantly, uh, would they hear the gospel? And, you know, depending who you ask uh, this question, you might get some pretty interesting answers. Um, some of us are internationals, and we can remember walking to church for the very first time. It can be scary and surprising at the very same time. But the truth is, whether you're an international or not, all of us have had that first encounter with church, with God, with other Christians. And, you know, this first encounter kind of like shapes our impressions um, for good or for bad. And this is especially true, I think, for international ministry where there is that gap of culture, of language, of how we look, how we sound. We're just so conscious of this. And it's the big idea, I think, of a passage that uh, we're going to look together today from Luke chapter 7. And the big idea of this passage is that the way that we look at God affects the way that we look at one another. The way that we look at Jesus affects the way that we see one another as Christians, you know, as people who've been forgiven uh, by Jesus Christ. So come with me to Luke chapter 7 and verse 36. Uh, when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who'd lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, uh, he said to himself, if this man was a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. And, you know, I asked them the question, what was this man's first impression? Uh, what's his first impression of this woman and of Jesus? This woman who is uninvited, who is not very respectable, he calls her a sinner. And also his impression of Jesus. You know, he says, if he was a prophet, you know, uh, he would know this and do that. You know, it's an, an altogether not a very positive assessment of Jesus and this woman. You know, Simon is up here, but this woman, Jesus, they are down there beneath him in terms of their respect, in terms of their holiness. But I think the thing to notice is verse 37, where it says, he says all this to himself. That means he doesn't say it out loud, but he says it in his heart. He's thinking these thoughts. He's thinking all these negative assessments. And the truth is, I think we all do this. We kind of like size up our competition. We pigeonhole people into the cool kids or into the nerds. And we do this with people, yes. But the point of the passage is we even do this with Jesus. We even do this with God. Verse 40, Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Well, tell me, teacher, he said. And Jesus goes on to tell him this parable. Verse 41, two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Verse 43, Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. And the question I asked was, do you think Simon got the moral of the story? Do you think he got it? Because Jesus did say to him, you know, you're right, you judge correctly. Still, do you think he got the moral of the story? That the person who loves more is the person who has been forgiven more. Or put it this way, you know, give five pounds to one of your kids. And then give 500 pounds to the other kid and ask, which of you loves me more? Or maybe you shouldn't do this, especially if your kids are in quarantine. You have like a Cain and Abel situation. Well, the situation with Simon here is he is someone who he does get it, but he doesn't, he doesn't get it. You can tell he doesn't get it. He knows the right answer, 
but he's kind of thinking, you know, this this really doesn't apply to me. No, she she's the problem. She's the sinner. She's she not me. And it goes to show that someone can have all the right answers, but have the completely wrong response to Jesus. Verse forty four. Then Jesus turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? You know, I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. And three times Jesus says, you did not do this, you did not do this, you did not do this. But then he says, do you see this woman? She did this, she did this, she did this. She went overboard. She went over the top in her love for me, says Jesus. Therefore, verse 47, I tell you, Jesus says, her many sins have been forgiven as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. That's, that's quite amazing. What's he saying? Whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Well, I think he's describing Simon. And I wonder if he's even describing people like me. You know, at the times when I have loved Jesus little, when I've kind of like held back my love or felt really foolish in showing my love for God, you know, you just don't want to go overboard or, you know, it just sound, feels so immature. You know, at times when I've thought like that, like Simon, have been times that I've forgotten how much I've been forgiven, how much I'm loved in Christ. You know, I'm too concerned about what people think, what they might say, and I've forgotten what Jesus has done for me, what Jesus has said to me, uh, which he says to this woman in verse 48, your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. You know, what does Jesus see when he looks at this woman? He sees a forgiven sinner. You know, she is a sinner. You know, in that sense, Simon is completely right. She has sinned against God. But the difference, the difference between Simon and this woman is not that one is righteous and the other is sinful. It's not that one is sinless and the other is sinful. No, both of them are sinful. But the only difference between the two is that one is forgiven and the other is not. You know, here's the thing I think that's really, really special and unique about international ministry in our churches. I think international ministry helps me to see something about the people around me who are very different from me, whether they're culturally different or racially different from me and my friends. It helps me to see that they have the same need. They receive the same love. They receive the same forgiveness in Christ that I too need from Jesus. And this is the opposite from saying, you know, I need to reach them with the gospel. They need to repent from the gospel. Oftentimes, you know, the people who are involved in international ministry who really, really go for it and invest themselves in it are people who see in the internationals they're trying to reach, you know, that conviction. Hey, here is someone who is responding to Jesus the way that I should be responding to him. Well, isn't that a wonderful motivation then to be invested in this wonderful ministry? Now then, and well, that, that was my reflection for today. Um, I think I'll try to post more each week as we go through the course for the next 10 weeks. Uh, thank you if you're watching this. Uh, if you could, pray for us over the next 10 weeks. And I wonder if for you and for your church, international ministry is something that might be worth investing in. And if that really is so for you and for your church, why not look into a course like Team or even the Philip Project that's happening here in Cambridge. The next intake is fairly soon. It's in October. It's something to think about and maybe to pray over. Uh, well, until then, uh, thank you. you know, keep watching this and God bless you.